She's golden, she's glowing, she's glorious, she's luxurious. Gotta give a little bit of shoulder action every now and then, okay? Hi you guys, it's Saina and welcome to my brand new YouTube channel. I'm so excited to finally be here filming my very first video for you guys. I've wanted to do this for quite some time now, so I can't express how wonderful it feels to finally be here. And I thought for my very first video, it would only be fitting to take you through this very simple, beginner-friendly makeup look that is this lovely golden half-cut crease. Whether you're going out on the town, whether you have a nice little photo shoot and you're just taking pictures, or if you just want to sit around your house and play dress up, that's fine too. Like This look can be used for whatever occasion. There are no rules when it comes to what you want to use your makeup for. I think anyone can do it. You can even add your own creativity and your own spin on it, which is why I love looks like this so much. Gold is like my go-to color with everything. See like my earrings are gold, my necklaces are gold, my rings are gold. I just love the way gold looks with brown skin. Brown skin girls. Okay, so keep watching to get all the deets on how I created this look. Here we go. sip of my green juice this is mint pineapple kale and coconut water it's so refreshing okay guys so we're just gonna hop right into it I've already applied my skincare you always want to make sure that you're starting your makeup from a nice base and a good skincare regimen so I am just going in and lightly filling in my brows with a brow powder today I really like the control that the brow powder and the angled brush give me when it comes to shaping my brows. It's just very subtle, but it makes a huge difference. I don't have super thick brows, but at the same time, I don't overfill them in. I like them to just like be very natural with just a little bit of shape. Just want to get the primer nicely covering the entire lid from that nice smooth base. I'm going to resume with eyeshadow and I'm going in with this transition color. It is the Sweet Potato Mango shade from the color range Juicy Boost palette. So I am just tapping my fluffy blending brush into that color and sweeping it in the crease of my eye and you're gonna see how this sort of just creates a very subtle beautiful transition shade to start off this half cut crease that we are creating okay so next I'm going in with a brown shade that is a little bit deeper and this shade is from my Tartius Pro to Go palette by Tarte I love these little palettes they are amazing for travel they're super compact and just great to grab when you are on the go. And I'm gonna be using the shade Stylin, and I'm basically gonna use this to deepen up my crease. So I'm just going in right in the middle. This is going to help to define the cut crease a little more. And I sort of like to bring this down and create like a little corner effect. I sort of just blend it down into the lower outer corner. You're sort of like carving out your lid a little bit. Okay, so you can see the difference already between the two eyes. You see how this is way more outlined and defined. That's the look we're going for. So now to start off the half cut crease, I'm gonna be going in with my LA Girl Pro Concealer in the shade Pure Beige, and I'm essentially just gonna carve out the cut crease. 
That's what I really love about these concealers. They're extremely convenient when it comes to things like this. And the top of the cut crease is really just going to lie right at the crease of your eye. Since we're doing a half cut crease, we're not going to extend this concealer over the entire lid. We're literally just going halfway and we will blend and buff out the edges of the concealer. Right? See that? And for this, a great way to know if where you applied your concealer and, you know, lined the crease is correct is to sort of just look down, look up, look around, lift your eyes, and just sort of see where the concealer touches. And wherever that is, is where you want to make sure you extend up your concealer because that is essentially your crease line. So it's a great way to guide your application and sort of blend out the edges of that concealer so that it sort of transitions seamlessly into our shadow. And you see how the crease has started to take shape. This is where we're gonna add color on top of our concealer. I'm gonna use the Lemon Wheatgrass shade flat shadow brush. I'm just gonna apply that golden color directly onto the front part of my half cut crease. I always gravitate towards golden and neutral eyeshadows. I just feel like they complement my skin so well. I really love blues and greens also. I love the way this color looks. Okay, so now that I have applied this lovely golden shade on top of my concealer, I'm now going to go in and deepen up my cut crease a little bit. And I'm going in with that dark brown shade that we used from the Tartius palette. It's a very subtle difference, but it really enhances the overall look. And I'm using a sort of ultra fine line uh, shadow brush to do this, just so that I can make sure I can control where the color is going and pinpoint it into that crease. So you can really see the difference between the eye that I defined and the other. This one is definitely like more intensified in the cut crease. So I'm gonna go in with a liquid liner. This is just the liquid liner from Sephora. And I'm going to create a winged eyeliner. This is like my old faithful go-to liquid liner. I have been using this since my college days and it's never failed me. It is a black liquid liner, so it's very intense. Um, and gives a very sharp and defined wing. So I'm gonna do a relatively thin wing, right? So I got my little cat eye going over there. We have our winged liner complete. So for my lower lash line, I'm gonna go in with the Sweet Potato shade from the Color Rain Juicy Boost palette that we used before. But I'm only gonna go in with this on the outer lower lash line. And then on the inner lower lash line, I am going to go in with Cucumber Avocado from the Juicy Boost palette. And I think it's gonna add a nice little pop of color to my lower lash line. I always like to add a little touch of color wherever I can. So I think it just does something, just makes it a little bit more dynamic. And even when I apply false lashes, I still apply mascara. And I really love the brush of this mascara. This is a mini travel size. I have so many travel size products <laughs> because I just love being able to grab certain mini things because I travel a lot back and forth between the East Coast and the West Coast to see my family. So, so many of my makeup products are just convenient and travel size. These are the Vegas Nay 
Ilor Grand Glamour Lashes. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put these on. Okay, so I went ahead and popped on my lashes. And before completing the rest of my eye look, I am going to go ahead and proceed to skin and face. So what I like to do for a nice full coverage look is go in with the Radiant Creamy Concealer by NARS. And this is in the shade Amon. And I like to just use this to spot correct. It just gives you a nice base before your foundation. And sometimes I just like to put it like around my mouth. You can use this wherever you choose. Any areas where you feel like your skin tone is a little bit uneven, you can use this concealer. And so now I'm just going in with a slightly damp beauty blender and blending out this concealer. Sometimes I like to let my concealer sit for just a minute because I feel like it gets a better blend that way without sort of moving the product too much. It's just like a little tip. So you can see just how well that concealer blends and presses into my skin. If I really didn't even want to wear foundation and wanted to just stop here and, you know, maybe do like a little bit of under eye concealer, I definitely could. That's how great that concealer is. Some days when I'm doing like a very soft and minimal makeup look, I just use that concealer and set it with a little bit of powder and I'll just go about my day. Like no foundation at all, just maybe like a little concealer and powder. Sometimes I even will just use like powder alone. I love to spray my skin with the Caudalie Beauty Elixir. This is one of my favorite facial sprays. I've been such a huge fan of it for years. I use it on days when I'm not doing makeup at all, sometimes in my skincare routine, but definitely in my makeup, I find that it gives me such a smooth finish if I spray it in between concealer and after foundation. I love the results that this gives me. And I simply love the smell of it. It is vegan, cruelty-free, natural, and it smells heavenly, you guys. This product smells so amazing. It contains organic essential oils. It has mint, rosemary, and rose extracts. It's sort of just like a toning astringent that's very therapeutic and you will love it. So I just like to shake it up before I use it because the essential oils, because it doesn't have any chemical emulsifiers in it, they sort of have a tendency to separate. So you just wanna give it a nice little shake before you spray it and hold it at a distance. I have a lot of different facial sprays and makeup setting sprays that I use, um, but I have been using that one a lot lately. I love it in the summertime also because it just is very cooling to spray on your face, very light and very natural. I don't like anything too heavy that's um, filled with like artificial fragrances or anything like that, especially because I have sensitive skin. So I like to stick with things that are very natural. And this is the part of the clean beauty at Sephora line as well. Next I'm going to be moving on to foundation. Now I have several different foundations that I use. I mostly again gravitate towards mattifying foundations. Because my skin tends to be more so on the oily side, I really do love the range of mattifying foundations. There are so many great mattifying foundations out there. But today I am actually going to be using the Natasha Denona Transform Matte. This is a poor vanity vanishing foundation and so it really just gives you a very refined poreless look overall and it makes your skin look so great I really like the finish of this one and because I couldn't really find a color that was my exact match I actually have been mixing two shades 75 wide dark yellow and the 89 wy dark warm yellow the bottle is really nice it's very lightweight which i like because it's ideal for traveling again um, i just love anything that's lightweight it makes it easier for me when i'm traveling and i'm just going to do this on the back of my hand honestly so i just combined the two on the back of my hand and i'm going in with my beauty blender again and i'm just going to sort of like dip it into the colors this is a medium to full coverage foundation so you can build it so i just really like a very light thin layer and this foundation is so weightless
So as you can see, everything is very consistent with my skin tone. So again, I'm going to do another spray of my Caudalie Beauty Elixir. And this just really helps to melt your makeup along the way while you're doing it, as opposed to just doing a couple sprays at the end over top of everything. This kind of helps to melt and blend your makeup in layers and provide a very smooth, refined finish. So that's why I do it like that in layers. Okay, so next we're gonna be moving on to highlighting and contouring. I love to go in again with my Radiant Creamy Concealers from NARS. I love the way they blend under the eyes. So for my under eye, I actually like to mix two shades, caramel, medium dark 2 and medium dark 1.5 Supre de Orge. I go in first with the caramel because this is of the two, um, the darkest one to provide the brightness you need under your eyes. And so I'm taking that same shade and I am going to just highlight above my lip, create like a little square and my chin and lastly my forehead and I apply the lighter shade later after I blend out this shade and for my nose highlight I like to use this pot paint concealer from MAC um, it's a little bit of a thicker concealer not as creamy and I'm just going to create a line down the middle of my nose. And the reason I use this uh, concealer for my nose highlight as opposed to the Radiant Creamy is because when I'm doing my nose highlight, I like a concealer that's a little bit more stable and a little bit thicker. And for your nose highlight, you really want that concealer to stay in place, but still blend out very creamy, just not as creamy as like your under eye concealer. Now to blend out my under eye concealer, I am just using a clean LC Cosmetics Velvet Sponge. So this is actually the top portion of the entire sponge. The sponge is much bigger, but I actually wound up splitting it in half. This top portion is really great for getting in the very precise inner corner of your eye. And the bottom portion of the sponge, which is right here, is larger and more round. And this is great for like all over the face. And when you're blending, you just sort of bring that concealer in closer to your nose. This is sort of creating the natural nose highlight and contour without having to do too much additional work. I don't like to use um, contour color on my nose too often, but I find that when I just bring my concealer in slightly closer, you don't really need to. It naturally just contours the nose. And so before I blend in the other highlighted areas, I'm actually going to go back in with that second NARS concealer that I showed you that's slightly lighter. It's a little bit of additional brightness because I love a nice bright under eye. So now I'm just blending out the other areas on my chin and forehead. So for my nose, today I'm gonna use my thin brush. You see this is a very fine tip crease brush, but I'm just gonna use it to sort of blend out that concealer. And sometimes I still, even after blending with that brush, just like to go and tap this product in lightly with my finger creates a very natural sort of blend. Sometimes the brush diffuses the product a little bit too much, but the fingertips are a great little substitute. Okay, so for my contour, today I'm going to be using a cream contour. And again, this is another area where I really just alternate based on how I'm feeling and, you know, the look I'm trying to achieve. I don't always use a cream contour. Sometimes I only just use like a powder. But today I'm gonna use a cream contour and set it with a powder. So this is actually an hourglass foundation stick. 
in the shade Chestnut. So I love this because it's super creamy and it blends very well. So you only need a very little bit of this, like a little bit of product goes such a long way. I just put it right sort of like underneath the cheeks, like literally that much. It blends out so well. You just don't need a lot. Taking another clean beauty blender and I'm just blending that out. You see that? I probably could have used even less, honestly, but I like to just bring it up and bring it down to sort of like create the shadow. And that's why I don't always go in with the product, just like ham all around my face and forehead and all that. Now I'll just add a little bit right at the jawline and blend. Okay. So you can see my shadows are very, very subtle. The key is just to blend this really well. So again, a beauty elixir. I am going in now with my setting powder to set my highlight. I have several different setting powders that I alternate between the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder in the shade Honey as like an all over translucent powder. The translucent medium deep powder. I sort of use this one for like all over my face sometimes when I'm setting. For the under eye, I use the Honey shade. That's better for my skin tone then the regular shade, that one tends to sometimes leave a bit of a gray, grayish or whitish cast, which I don't like. I mean, you can work with it if you just make sure you really blend out the product. Now that they have the honey shade, I like to use that instead. Okay, so I just like to dip my beauty blender directly into the powder. So I know a lot of people don't really bake that often now. Um, I still do, depending on the look, but there are definitely days now where I kind of just set by pressing my powder in lightly with a little brush. I actually did that in my makeup routine yesterday. And I was like, you know, I miss baking. I haven't baked in a while. So today I am going back to my old faithful baking routine. And I'm not gonna leave this powder for long. I only let it sit for like a second, okay? And, and I'm just highlighting this area. I can blend it out later. I know it looks like a lot of powder, but it's just to make sure all your concealer is set very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my contour shade into the hollows of my cheeks. I am using Fenty Beauty in the shade Coco Naughty. I also use Mocha Mommy when I have a tan, especially that shade's slightly darker. This one provides a very natural looking contour. And I just sort of get that right into the area where I applied that foundation stick color and I just want to really make sure I diffuse it. Let's blend it very nicely and then I get these other areas under here. If it looks kind of harsh right now, we're going to blend all of that out. So next I'm just going in and dusting off, really like not necessarily dusting off, actually more so like pressing in this powder. If you need it to blend a little bit better, you can go in with this translucent powder in medium deep. Sometimes I just like to take a little bit on my brush and it helps the product to just press in very nicely. Right along my nose contour. And it's sort of like a stippling motion that I'm doing with the brush. And again, blending everything. Another nice blending product that I like to use, Pro Finish Compact. It's like a very sheer coverage. This is really great to like use while you're blending your face out without adding like a ton of extra product on top of everything. And sometimes I like to mix them even. I'll use the medium deep translucent powder from Laura Mercier on like the lower portion of my face. And then I'll use the Makeup Forever 
Pro Finish. And this is in the shade 174 for me. I'll use this on the upper portion of my face, like around my under eye. So you can see how everything is really just taking shape and blending together. Blend, 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 blend. When you're in doubt, blend some more. <laughs> oh, and this brush, this is a Pro Airbrush number 55 from Sephora. It's so soft and doing exactly what it says, creating like that airbrushed effect. So you guys see how that blended out so nicely? Ooh, just quality blending. So for my lower lash line, sometimes I just like to add a white liner to the waterline. I find that it just makes my eyes sort of pop. White liner. Okay, so then I go in with my mascara again and apply it to my lower lashes. And I'm going back into my color range. You see this palette, Coconut Water, which is sort of this creamy white shade. I'm using this very thin little brush. It's great for getting precisely into that inner corner. Tapping the shade right in there. Very subtle. So our look is almost done. I really love to mix my highlights. So the two that I'm gonna mix today are both MAC Gold Deposit, which has been an old faithful of mine, and Soft and Gentle. So I'm gonna mix these two highlights and I love the effect that they create. Gold Deposit I think is so beautiful and it's just like a very golden, shimmery, lovely highlight. It's one of my favorites. Soft and Gentle is a little bit more pink and silvery, which is why I really love to layer this one with Gold Deposit. I think together they create some beautiful highlight combinations. Once again, spray my face. The thing about the Beauty Elixir also is that it just absorbs into the skin so quickly. I barely even need to use my fan. That just sort of like melts into the skin. I really think it's like the peppermint element. And just going lightly over my cheeks here with gold deposit. It's such a beautiful shade. I spray before highlighter and after highlighter. And I find that, that gives me beautiful results. For my nose, I'm taking a very fine tip brush again. I don't highlight the entire bridge of my nose. I just go at the tip and then right between the eyes. And so then I go in and layer with soft and gentle and then layer on my cheeks. And then to create a nice brow bone highlight, I like to take soft and gentle with a very small brush and just go in right at my brow bone. It really accentuates the brow bone to complete the eyeshadow. Then lastly, I am going to go in with a little highlight above my lip. I like to do this also because it sort of just makes my lip color pop a lot more <laughs> right at that cupid's bow. See how that just accentuates like the top of your lip? And so it's just a nice little glossy pink lip. I'm going to go change my outfit. Okay guys, so this is my finished look of this beautiful golden half cut crease. She's giving golden, she's giving sparkly. What I love about this look is that not only is it a nice matte finish that isn't dry, but I just have zero pores. Like the finish from this foundation and then my setting spray, just left my skin like i'm talking completely poreless you guys and i really have no pores whatsoever it just applied so flawlessly the finish is absolutely lovely but yet it still looks very natural i mean i love a good poreless look that somehow still looks natural i am wearing a bodysuit from my nuri nahara cairo collection this is the dynasty bodysuit in orange it's this lovely sheer bodysuit with these detailed pom-pom flare sleeves this is one of my favorite pieces from my entire collection i had so much fun designing this one and it's even more fun to wear I absolutely love this. If you are interested in this look and other looks from my Cairo collection, you can check them all out at www.nurinahara.com. My earrings are also from my recent 
Earthly Oasis collection. They have this geometric golden detail and they're just the perfect little touch of gold to complement the entire look. So I loved filming this video for you guys and I hope that you found it helpful and enjoyed watching it. I can't wait to do more videos like this. So thank you so much again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.